Hi, hello, welcome and welcome back to yet another episode on Little Slop YouTube channel. So in this series of videos, we are watching the JMeter performance testing end to end and I could see a huge support and lots of comments and feedbacks in the comment section. Thanks everyone for following my video and in the few uh, first few videos we were discussing about the phase one where we identify the test environment, the application, the URL and in phase two we were discussing about what are all the, the performance metrics that we have to collect at the end of the testing and then in phase three we discussed about the in scope, the out scope, let me just do this, okay so we discussed about the in scope, the out scope and uh, on okay and then we saw about what are all the scenarios and how to take the transaction names and then we discussed about the api calls what type of protocols we are going to test and then we have discussed about the components the resources which we are going to use or we are going to monitor and then we have also discussed about the workload modeling for different types of scenarios for for different types of performance testing just like the load test, the soak test and the spike test. And then in phase 4 we found out or we discussed about how to configure or what are all the parts that we have to configure as part of the test environment. And then in phase 5 we saw who are what and the collaboration part of the test scripts and the status of the test scripts. In phase 6 we are going to execute the test and in phase 7 it's the analyzing, the reporting and retesting. So now we are in phase three, so, so phase five. So we are going to create the script. So today we will see, in this video, we will see how to create a web application script and then we will see how to create an API script. So this is going to be just a creation of the scripts and we will see about how to do the parameterization and correlation on next script. So we will start how to create the script in this video. And before we move on to the video, let me request you all to subscribe to our channel. If you have not subscribed yet, please do subscribe, share your comments and questions in the feedback section. So with no further ado, let's go to the video. So let's open the JMeter. So we need a JMeter tool and we need the Firefox, the browser, which I'm going to use for recording. And then to record the script, so most of us, we can either add the thread group or sorry the can add the thread group and under thread group we can add the samplers the test plan and everything so there is other option as well so either we can add these individually or else we have the option of doing them as part of this template so go to file menu and under file we have the templates and then we can choose so i normally use recording and when i click on create i get the recording one or else in case if i want to record it with think time i just go with this so this is the main or the most frequently used recording with think time and i'm choosing recording with think time and click on create and let me click no and yes so here i have got all the components which i need for this performance scripting so i've got the user defined variables the http request defaults the HTTP cookie manager which stores the cookies when we execute or record the scripts and then under this we have the thread group so thread group is where we can design the number of threads which is basically the number of users the ramp up period the loop count the number of iterations in other words and then we have the recording controller which records whatever actions that we do and then here we have the HTTPS test script recorder which by default will be disabled. So let's enable it by right clicking on it and then let's choose enable. So now it has got enabled and then we have got the uniform random timer. Since we have chosen the template of recording script with think time. So we have got the, think, the, the random timer and then we have got the view results tree. So now let's start the scripting. And the port we are going to use is double eight double eight. So let's go to the Firefox now and then go to the settings. Make sure we are having the right proxy. So the correct proxy for this is we should not use any of the other options like no proxy or auto detect proxy or use system proxy settings because any of these 
will not sync the recording with the JMeter or the browser with the JMeter. So the only option to do is we need to have the local host as the HTTP proxy and then the port number has to be 8888. And then make sure you check this so that all the proxy is also using the HTTPS. So the same setup will be used across all these protocols. And then you can click on OK. So now we are set to start our recording. Let me open another tab. So to start the recording, we should click on start. And before that, let me make some other changes here. So under the target controller, let me click on use this plan third group under recording controller. My script should come and then the grouping should be put each in a new transaction control. So we have multiple options. We have do not group samplers. We have add separator between groups. We have put each group in a new controller, putting storing first sampler of each group only. So this is the best practice of using it. So putting each group in a new transaction controller so that we can easily identify the transactions. So let me choose the last option. And now we are good to start. Let's keep the browser ready. And then when we click on start, I'm clicking on OK. And in case if you face any certification issue, let me, I will tell you. So in case if you are having any certification issue, let me close this. Make sure you are installing your certificate in the right location. So I'm clicking on install certificate in the, for the, in the local machine under next. Click yes. And then you have to place the certificate in the right location. It has to be under trusted root certificate authority. So since I've already installed it, I have the certificate ready for me. So the certificate is valid from 19th of March to 26th of March. So it is valid for seven days. So make sure you install your certificate. Otherwise, you will not be able to record your script. In fact, I have a separate video for this. Please do check the link in case if you want to set up the certificate. So let's go to the next step. So, so let's start the scripting again. I'm clicking on start, clicking OK. And let's go to the step one. And what I'm going to do now is let keep the pages side by side so that we can track the transactions very easily. So the first step is going to be, let me close the pages. Okay, the first step is going to be opening the pet store, which is here. And this is, this is completed. Let me just change the shade to the one. This is completed. And then the second step, which is entering the store and that is completed too. Sorry, that's completed here. And then the third step, which is sign in. That is also completed. So let's enter the credential. And then this is going to be step four. And I'm clicking on login. Don't save. Then the fifth is going to be clicking fish, I'm clicking on fish. And then the sixth step is going to be clicking on product. So I'm clicking on the product. And then the seventh one is going to be add to cart. I'm adding it to cart. Then the eighth step is going to be click proceed to checkout. Proceed to checkout. Step nine is going to be entering payment details. So I have entered all the payment details. I'm clicking on continue. And then the tenth step. Here you can see the 10th step is clicking on confirm. So I'm clicking on confirm. And then the 11th step is signing out. So before that, let's check. So we have got the order completed and let me click on sign out. So with that, we have completed the scripting. Let me click on stop. So here we can see all the 11 steps. So we don't have any extra requests has got recorded. So we have got all these 11 requests which we have got. So let's now go to these requests and make sure that they are the right ones. Otherwise, we will remove them. It's of no use. So what we will do now is, so this first one, let's remove it. And then we will keep the other names. So the first one is going to be the landing page, so which is not getting recorded and or which is not required. So let's go to the step two, which is clicking enter the store. And we will change the transaction name as well. So now it's going to be step X. So these are the steps which we are going to use for this test. So now the step is going to be 01. Click. 
let me restore it as well so that we can easily do it since if you if you have two screens that will be very easy otherwise we will need to restore the screen so that we can complete the task so click enter the store url because that is an action and that action gives us this much response time so we have to make sure that we have the right response or right transaction name so the second step is going to be clicking on sign in and then the third step is going to be enter credential and click login then let's minimize these and then the fourth step is going to be click fish then the fifth step is going to be click on products any product and then the sixth or the sixth step is going to be click on add to cart the seventh one is going to be click on proceed to checkout the eighth one is going to be entering payment details and click ok I believe that should be the transaction name let's confirm click continue and then the ninth step is going to be click confirm button and then the twelfth one is going to be clicking on sign out so these are the steps which we have sorry it's going to be the tenth Okay, so we have just 10 steps okay so this is going to be the 10 step which is clicking on sign out so in this way we have completed the creation of the scripts let's do a quick check let's make sure whether everything works fine so let me run a test click yes and this is going to be outside the bin so it's not in the bin this is going to be so in case if you are running a set of scripts so make sure you create a new folder and this one is going to be the sprint one so let's name it the sprint one under sprint one this is going to be script number one let me save this script text existing file then we go to the view results tree and here we can see the script has got successfully executed okay so script is running and here we can see we have got the response data the response body and everything is working fine let me choose the HTML option so that I can see it clearly so the very first page and then the sign in page clicking on sign in so we can clearly see each and every page like how does it work so how many users okay so it's the same set of users and then I've got to click on add to cart shopping cart and the payment details clicking on order and then finally so all these steps have got recorded so in fact we have to change the transactions inside the script so that they'll be sync to the transactions that we will do so I think you would have understand how to do this recording of the web application so if, if in case if you face any issues in doing this please do comment in the comment section in our next video we will see how to create a web api script so until i meet you in the next video it's bye bye from us and little slaw